Robbie Coburn. Thank you very much, Ken. Uh, it's an incredible honour to be here, reading with such great poets, um, and to be in this beautiful town. Uh, so I come from a farm. So we've got uh, 30 acres out in a town called Woodstock. Um, it hasn't got Hendrix, but there's usually uh, animals, and lots of them. Um, and I've recently moved back there after being in the city. Um, I moved to Fitzroy. I made the, the foolish mistake thinking that I wanted to live that fast life. Um, and it was a big mistake, but I've learnt that lesson. Um, and this is a poem about one of the greatest lessons you can learn, which is the first time I encountered uh, an electric fence as a child. So I think there are a few things that really kick you up into action like that. It's called Shock Lessons, a paddock scripture. Exploring the farm as a child, I would part the tall grasses, moving through the dirt beneath the thick rushes, consisting mainly of overgrown clover and clusters of foliage. I'd map the distance that made up our property. It seemed endless. That innocent drive to run further beneath the ceiling of leaves, expanses of earth shifting beneath a child's slight weight. I would imagine how far the landscape stretched. One afternoon, when my parents were at the races, I followed the pasture floor to the fence line at the back of the property. Wanting to go further, I hovered a blade of grass over the ticking wire, as I had watched Dad do so many times, to test if it was safe to cross. Feeling nothing, I wrapped my hands around one of the copper threads. Struck by that first surge through the body, electricity running like a vein of blood beneath the skin, as though a voice screamed through a haze, blinding my eyes and rattling my mind with panic. No longer wishing to know more, to understand, I stood startled at the trapped earth and wires that had run a painful electric current through my body. It would have been foolish to even attempt climbing over into the neighbouring paddock. All I could do then was give up. Thank you. Um, I don't do many poetry readings, so um, I just need to make the point that writing doesn't necessarily translate to speaking in public. Uh, this next poem I'm going to read is one that I wrote for my grandfather, uh, who also lived on the property. Uh, he was an incredible man. He had uh, he fought in the Second World War. Um, he worked with almost every animal I could think of. Um, just an, an absolutely incredible man. And this is a poem about that horrible uh, disease. The claimed in which was Parkinson's. Uh, this poem's called Parkinson's in memory of Jack Coburn. Terrifying these empty days in fixation. Not on your death, but the way you died. The slow progression of rapture in the body, fracturing images where the different definition of muscle is diminished. In illness, experience means little. Cannot dictate composure, crossing from your eyes of war, long after the deaths of men you knew in youth and have forgotten. The faithless pulse of scars along the earth, where then your voice reduced to minimal protests for sleep. Would rather you had left quickly. The ash pulled on the paddock's edge. From each direction, light cast long so that each blade was clear to you from your unmoving shell. And to seeing a culmination of flesh, the mechanical drag of skin as it tears, the way it must pull the taut face into stillness and the long drawn severity. Still a strangeness in hoping to find you. Before grief, where loss ignited your flight from pain, your eminent resign asked for, the scrawl of your hand distant in mine. All breath pitted against the skull, the separation of body, 
unresponsive years, all I have left of your name. The surge of blood trailed off becomes a lull, a lull in consciousness on your farm where I so often walk. Grasses that flow gently when all breath expires. <laughs> hey, he was a hell of a guy. Um, um, and I think the older I'm getting, the more I realise that I've been very lucky to have incredible male role models around me. Um, and I think that, that this, uh, this book's a real testament to that, to my father and um, to my grandfather. And obviously, incredible female influences as well. Um, I think this might be my favourite poem I've, I've written um, in the book. Um, so, you know, when, when you're growing up, you sort of you want to be where, where the action is, I suppose, and the city seems to be where it is, but... Um, I've definitely come to the realisation that that's, that's just not where I belong, unfortunately. And this poem is called How I Feel About Living Here, which I wrote when I, um, as a teenager when I lived on the farm. Back at the farm after days away, my father is in the shed mixing feeds, tearing open crude bags of mints. The breath of dogs swoop through wire and gather the scent at the forefront of bars. Bodies unfurling kennels. The warm pressure of dusk descends over the paddocks, the wind cutting through the tin, creating a breeze inside. His hands skirt easily across the surface of the table. This image of Dad opening the freezer over and over, sprinkling, sprinkling the kibble into the mixed bowls, then into the kennels, is one I know well. Why am I still? His body turning backwards at my presence and walking straight up to me, blood still dripping from his fingers. I love all the things I hate about being here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>